real quick. I'll just start off, you know, had a chance to review the film. Um, I thought our guys played hard, uh, showed some grit, showed some toughness um, at the end to come back and win that thing and was pleased overall with the effort that we played with. Um, thought it was good. We made good strides and uh, got to continue to make strides. Uh, on an injury note, uh, JoJo, he was evaluated this morning. Uh, he's in the protocol uh, for the concussion deal. So with that, I'll open up with questions. We'll start with chat. Coach, I mean, preseason, wins, losses, does it mean something or not? Yeah, I mean, shoot, it's uh, you always want to win, right? You play to win. Um, it's important, right, for the team, important for the morale. I mean, you want to give great effort. But, yeah, when you go out there, you, you want to win football games for sure, whether it's the preseason or the regular season. Raven? Coach, roster cuts are in less than 10 days. So, for guys who are kind of on the bubble, what do you want to see from them this week against Philly? competition, just competitive nature. You know, there's it's going to be tough. We're going to have to make some tough decisions here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but just go out and compete and and uh, show that you belong every single day. Kevin? Shane, will um, JT travel to Philly with you guys? Yes, he will. Yep. And then Raven brought up um, your roster cuts a week from Tuesday. Have you guys thought about keeping him on PUP at all, or is that in the discussion? Yeah, we're still working through all those things right now. Um, obviously, like I said, when he's cleared 100%, he'll be out there. James? Dan, I'm just curious. I know Anthony didn't play last night, but what's like the learning process throughout that game? I know he had like an earpiece in. So what is he trying to get from that? Yeah, I mean, he's taking those mental reps on the sidelines. Um, it's always good to go through that mental process. So obviously taking that rep on the sidelines, going through that process, hearing the play call, uh, and seeing it visually on the sidelines is good. And then obviously we get a chance to go come at, uh, back in uh, tomorrow and review the tape with these guys and learn from it and get better. Steven? Hey, Shane. Um, just Josh Downs, uh, you, you've talked about him already, the, the impression that he's made. But I'm wondering just like when you're playing in the slot and you're playing inside, particularly as a small guy, like what's the skill set and – and does it take a certain amount of like fearlessness, you know, to play in there and, and do the things that he does? Yeah, I think so. I think the you know the best slots around the league just have a natural feel in there. They really do. I mean, there's different. You know, you know, you got man to man coverage on nickel guys. You got you know matchups on linebackers. You got guys blitzing off the slot that you got to adjust your route to. Uh, and I thought he's he's been done a tremendous job along with Isaiah and the rest of that crew. Um, he's coming along good. He's seeing it good, and we just got to continue in that trend. Do you, do you have to have like a, a certain football IQ to be able to do all that? You feel Yeah, like? I think so. I think you do. I, and I think, like I said, I think there's a natural feel in there. You know, some of those guys just have a natural feel. I think the best ones in the league all have natural feel and they see it. Obviously, you got a coach, um, but a lot of those guys have a natural feel for it inside and he has that. Andrew? Stane, what will it be like just for you to go back to Philly and just how exciting is it to see some, I'm sure, some old friends that way? Yeah, no, it'll be good. It'll be good to go back and see some guys, but it'll be good just for the work uh, to go against another opponent again and see some different looks for our guys. I know it'll be competitive on Tuesday's practice uh, along with a game on Thursday. So looking forward to it as, as a whole. Go ahead, chat. Staying with your experience with different quarterbacks, which you've talked about, what with your work from Jalen, what can you take from that to kind of work with a, I guess, similar skilled quarterback? What 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 do you take from that to help you with this? I think the first and foremost with Jalen talking about Jalen is the work ethic that he had was second to none. Um, you know, the way he went about his business. I think that's a message to all players, especially young quarterbacks. You want to be successful in this league. You can have all the talent in the world, but you got to work at it. And uh, that's what he did. He's a talented player. He works at it. And I think that for all quarterbacks, different types of quarterbacks, it doesn't matter. I think that's the one common denominator is that they love ball, they work at it, and they want to continue to improve and get better. And you've kind of made it clear as you've talked to us, that's what Anthony's got. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing a tremendous job so far, and we got to keep that going through the season. Uh, it's a long, you know, it's a gauntlet season, 17 weeks, new opponent every week, new game plan every week, uh, and we got to be ready to roll. Owen? Shane, I know at the start of camp, Chris mentioned tight end and corner as two really competitive spots. He was looking forward to see play out. 
Um, as you head into this kind of final week plus, where are your eyes at kind of real competitive position battles you still see up in the air? Yeah, I mean, that's those are those are the two big ones. Uh, the corner spot, obviously, um, the tight end spot. I know some guys are banged up at tight end, but always going through that process, seeing where guys are at. Same with the corners. Uh, you know, who's going to be that fourth, fifth, sixth wide out for us? Um, there's going to be some tough decisions to be made. But again, we got another good week and a half uh, to figure that out. Joel, do you do do you feel like you need to have six wide receivers on a roster? Could it be five? And what are you kind of looking for from those last couple spots? Yeah, I mean, obviously they got to have special teams value, you know, on those spots. That fourth, fifth, sixth wide out, uh, whether it's five or six, you know, or three or four tight ends, uh, we'll make that decision when it needs to be made. But those guys definitely got to add special teams value. Raven. And coach, you just kind of talked about the cornerback battle. And so Juju Brents is a guy, you guys drafted him fairly high. He kind of got a little, little bit of a late start to everything. How do you feel like he's picking up the defense and kind of finding his role on the team? He's good. Uh, you know, he's done a nice job so far. He shows his physicality that he showed in college at Kansas State. And then now, you know, getting him out there with the guys, just how physically he's been playing has been good to see. Uh, and then Rush and Jones and Bake and Flowers. I mean, all those guys, it's a competitive group and uh, I like the group. And again, there's going to be some tough decisions to be made, but like where everyone's at. Last one for James. Shane, how do you evaluate the tight end room specifically when so many of the top guys have been banged up like Drew Ogletree, Lonnie Woods, Molly Cox? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough, but it, it allows those guys that aren't hurt that are playing out there to give them an opportunity to go compete and get those reps and see where they're at. You know, I mean, sometimes in, you know, in this game, it's hard when guys are injured. Some guys step up and that's how it goes. And uh, but as a whole, the guys that have been here um, that are playing right now uh, like where they're at. And obviously we got to get the guys that are hurt uh, healthy. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. We'll see you in Philly.